everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Always Open. On today's show, we're going to be talking about how to have courage to do something that is scary to you, a question about the most important thing you've lost, and a user submitted question about how to ask out a girl at a gym. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and on today's show, I have... Oh, me, John. <laughs> Hi. Great. Hi. I'm Lindsay. I'm Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even looking at like monitors or anything. I thought you were going to go to Maggie first. Oh, you went with the book on. I, I was hoping for the Miley Cyrus high. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. The first time you were on, I think you were like, I'm Maggie Tominay. Is that what I <laughs> You did like your little uh, country accent. With this hair, I feel like we have to. Oh, yeah, the Southern Belle thing. Yeah. That's true. Texas makes our hair so it's, large. Yeah. So full of secrets. Us. Maggie has very... Is that why my hair is so large? Yes. Do I have mm. so many secrets? You do. That's just the way your hair looks. Yeah. Is, this, is this second day hair? So what's second day hair? Like, you didn't wash it today? Because you, John told me particularly that he doesn't wash his hair on the days he needs to film because it gets too puffy. Mm. I, don't, I don't shampoo my hair. I shampoo my hair like maybe once every week and a half. Oh, hey. really? Wow, lucky. Yeah. yeah. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. Uh, no, I, I Maggie and I do that. I had, for I had a really great <laughs> um, We had a really great guy come do hair for 11 Little Roosters. Robert? Robert, yeah. And um, then I caught wind that uh, Bernie went to him for a cut, and I really liked Robert on the set because Robert has really thick, bigger like, than yours. Yeah, really like real curls. Mm. And um, and then he even on the on the set, he gave me like some cream, some curl cream because we were talking about stuff. And I was like, this guy knows curls. I want this guy. And um, so when Bernie like went to him for a cut, I was like, oh, he does cut. So I went to him and we had a long talk about stuff. And yeah. And he helped you out. Yeah. Your hair's looking good. I Thank like you. That. Yeah. He obviously didn't give you any product to help out. But, yeah, it's true. Uh, There's nothing to be done. <laughs> There's nothing to be done to tame this, especially on today. What's the weather like outside? I know. The weather's yeah. terrible. My hair was just like, just walk outside and just, just absorbs <laughs> yeah. all of Austin in here. Well, luckily, I don't think you're getting like dread territory yet where like yeah. you run your fingers through your hair and you get stuck. Which yeah. Like, I have, have that. No, it's, yeah. it's mostly a thing of like, I don't wash it because if I did, it would strip all of the, the natural oil. Like, I don't have to. Yeah. Like, and so, but I, I, I condition almost mm -hmm. every, every couple days. That's why I wash my hair opposite days. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I wash it every use, use second shea butter or third. conditioner. Blaine's surprising because his hair is pretty short too. Yeah. So he said well, he, he hardly ever yeah. shampoos yeah. just <laughs> conditions. Yeah. But if I just condition my hair ever, it would just look like a grease factory. Yeah. 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 It'd be terrible because my hair's already greasy as it is. No, if, yeah, you're right though. If I, I don't shampoo my hair like because if I do, it gets even bigger. Yeah. Mm. Luckily, I've dyed it enough. I can deep condition, just leave it yeah. all day, and it's excellent. Yep. Yep. That's the way to go. Like, live. <laughs> Don't all become right. straw. Let's do our That's shout been out. That's the hair segment of your show. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Let's do our shout out of the week. Okay. This one is submitted by Brandon T. And I'm going to be straight up with y'all. Brandon T. submitted a shot called the Pimp Cane and recommended that we do Kahlua and peppermint schnapps. And Texas, being the expert that he is, said, uh, that would be disgusting. So we changed it up. <laughs> so fuck you, oh, Brandon. Is exact. <laughs> it's now it's now Kahlua and vanilla vodka. Vodka. I already forgot within like the two seconds. <laughs> yes. I don't know if I've ever had peppermint schnapps. That is it's the first delicious. thing I ever got drunk on. It's, it's very like rumple good. mints. Have you already had rumple it's mints? Good. Rum what? Rumple mints. What are rumple mints? Oh it's, it's yeah. Just a, it's a peppermint schnapps. It tastes like peppermint. Okay. Oh, okay. It's very strong peppermint. Yeah. Peppermint okay. schnapps is Roxy's drink of choice oh, for yeah. all you always sunny fans out yeah. there. That's yeah. what I have every time I go over to Aaron's house for Christmas. His his parents have just like bottles of peppermint schnapps. Yum. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> delicious. That like sounds actually pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. It's a different version of the pimp cane. I'm sorry. This is submitted by Brandon T. Cheers, yeah, everyone. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Maggie's, uh, Maggie's taking got my shot. Two, and Lindsay's got her little punch shot. The godmother responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you signed up for this. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> now one for the bait. That was tasty. That was tasty. You done good, good Tex. I'm glad we didn't have the yeah. uh, peppermint in there. Mm. Got it. <laughs> it's all good. Peg's <laughs> like, feeling great. Like, Are you crying? <laughs> Her smile got twice as big immediately. And I adore it. I think the best part about that was right before we did the shot, Barbara said y'all. I was like, oh, she said it. Uh, it comes out naturally well, now. It's like... I always had an issue because I lived in multiple places with divorced parents. So it's like I'd live in Texas and go to New Jersey. And when I would be in New Jersey, they would like make fun of me for saying y'all. But mm -hmm. then like there would be other conversations where they say y'all. And I'm just like, what is, is this it just because street? I have an accent when I say it? Like, yeah, it doesn't like it's not as obvious when you say it, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it's more obvious when yeah, you say it, rather. I don't know. It's yeah. just like. I go home. Every time I go home to Canada, I start. I'm saying y'all <laughs> because it's what I say in my daily life now. And of course, everyone there is just like, whoa, like, look at you, Ms. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part of the language there. Goodness. 13. What age did you come here? 
22. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're quite a bit off before you've been here in the majority oh, of yeah. your life. Oh, okay. yeah. I've only yeah. been here no five way. years. Yeah, Barbara came into work. It's like a couple months after I started, yeah, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you were interning? Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. because um, I was good friends with Michael for a while before moving here. And I remember, like, I used to talk to him pretty often, and he started talking about this girl, Lindsay, and how she's, like, the coolest chick ever. Oh, thanks. And how they Me just, and like, drive around and, like, <laughs> hang out on his floor in his apartment because he had no furniture yep. and, like, all this stuff. Yep, Skyrim. Whereas like, I'm, like, the opposite end where I'm, like, Lindsay, you're in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, come on. <laughs> this is fun. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> We're just friends. friends. <laughs> All right, well, let's start things off with our roast or toast segment. Oh, goodness. And that's, if you're not familiar with that segment, it's where we ask one of our guests to bring a photo or video from their past, and then we get to either make fun of it or just, you know, toast to you and your accomplishments <laughs> and you as a, as a young child. Are we yeah. roasting or toasting today? Maybe? We'll find out. To, so our, our victim today is Maggie, and she has, uh, she had a lot of photos to choose from. I did. From. I brought a whole scrapbook. Yes. <laughs> but you had a whole album over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, were, you requested some help to pick out one. I did. Uh, Jordan and Isa helped me figure it out, but... Uh... Oh man! Wow! Yes! Yeah! What is this? A oh, school photo? <laughs> the bottom <laughs> caption. Great. Just in case you couldn't. Yeah. Tell, this was not taken just like randomly. This is not <laughs> yeah. an impromptu thing. She I want to say this was probably like 97, 98. So you were like around eight there. or nine. Yeah. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> little That's button nose. Oh my yeah. gosh! They don't do photos like that anymore for school kids, do they? With like the fake tree and everything. Do they not? not really? Was it I fake? don't know. Yeah. Oh, any, yeah, that's absolutely Any fake. school. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's literally a backdrop yeah. and probably like a little thing that's like yeah. next to you that's making that yeah. those leaves look like that. Like a foot up, there's just a stump like cut off. Yeah. 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 An actual like tree. <laughs> any school photos I've seen lately, because I go and check them out. Of is uh, <laughs> I like to review them and leave comments. It's, it's, like, it's like conventional in front of like a like colored background, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the the tree thing though, I've got that picture. I That's... almost gave y'all a glamour shot I did with one of nice. my guys. Oh, you should have. That'd have been amazing. Really I'm tempted to like have Bonus. you send it to us and just put it in the I mean, I can send it to you right now. Do it. Do yeah, it. we may we put maybe the, should uh, put it in the episode. Yeah. Put it in the first. Yeah. Put it in the oh. first members. I feel yeah. like we could have you on Post so show, many episodes. Have it come up. Oh, it's true. We could have you on so many episodes and we'll have just it's, endless. Yeah, no, I was the best Lindsay too. Yeah. I had some of us where I like contemplated, but I was like, yeah. Those My time fun. to shine, not yours. That's <laughs> yeah, true. You're you, pregnant. You, you get enough attention. Right I feel ba- I feel bad roasting this photo because I feel like we all look like that at one <laughs> point in our life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, fucking look at me. <laughs> how, how old in that photo? Uh, like I want to say eight. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's pretty generically what we all, the level of like yeah. weebiness. I think I might have had a mullet at that age. Nice. That's a little worse than nice. what I had, I think. Yeah. yeah I probably did too. You did have those Harry Potter glasses though. <laughs> I did, which yes. is actually funny because. Uh, a little bit I of had... Minkus from Boy Meets World. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I'm thinking George. <laughs> <laughs> I saw George from Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> which I take as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I, uh, I asked Jordan and Issa to help me like figure out because it's like I don't get embarrassed very easily. So I'm just kind of like, mm, we're both very know. depraved. Yeah. Like, what, what could we What throw the fuck am I going to care if you guys yeah. say shit? But um, so Jordan and Issa had picked out between two and it was a school photo or it was um this picture of how my house was decorated for my 12th birthday because we went to go see harry potter oh, and so yeah. there was like oh, yes. harry potter shit around that's and so yeah. cool though that would be a toast that's awesome. immediately. <laughs> yes. that's incredible that's a toast i think it was just funny to isa because she's like so much younger so it's like oh yeah she, she wasn't she, part of that she, she must have been like generation. eight or something when how old is out. isa like 24 25 yeah something like that. i think so Not that much younger God, yeah, how long ago did the first harry potter film come out it was, it was a while. Was it in the 90s? Or if it was, it was I was 90s. 12. I turned 12 in 2003. Michael would know. Wouldn't, you, so that's, wouldn't that's, it be 2001? Because you're born in 89. Yeah, 2001. Mm-hmm. I, just, I did it backwards. 16, 16 years ago. Yeah, 2001. Yeah. That so was, I was in high school. Ago. Mm-hmm. Man, I Have I ever told older. you how, like... I'm an old bastard. <laughs> so, like, they released the first Harry Potter movie November 12th. Second Harry Potter movie November 13th. My birthday is November 14th. Ooh. Third Harry Potter movie comes out in fucking June. <laughs> You're like, no, like, <laughs> yeah. that motherfucker. How dare they? That's so weird. This. They usually don't like don't don't like go off of, like a schedule like that. Like all the the Lord of the Rings came out mm-hmm. in like Christmas yeah. time. Well, I think it's because of like um, 
I feel terrible forgetting his name, but the guy who played Dumbledore that passed away oh, and yeah. then yeah. Just... having to recast and then a completely new director came in. And so like, I can, I, I understand now as an adult. Yeah, but... I'm glad you understand. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about how they knew it was your birthday and yeah. decided not to do it, but yeah. you made it dark. You know, it just feels inappropriate. <laughs> so well, are we roasting or toasting this photo? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah I forgot about that. Long I, no, we're I think back. that's a toast because everybody can connect with that yeah. immediately. That's yeah. not... I'm adorable as fuck. I'm not cute, toast. but I'm adorable. Adorable. Yes. Minkus was adorable. A toast. To, to oh, well, thank toast. you. Yes. You get a toast. You get a toast. All right. Mm. So let's move on to our Ask Us Anything topic. Okay. So this one I chose, I, I really like this question, but it was a story followed by a question. So this is from a user named Graham, and Graham writes, Hi, Graham. I'm a 22-year-old gay man who recently found himself fascinated by the idea of doing drag. It's something that I know I would be amazing at, and yet I find myself scared and anxious about being that open to critical attention. I'm also nervous about tucking and having to wrangle my testes like an angry rancher, but that's more of a personal problem. How do you guys muster up the courage and motivation to do something that is scary to you? Um, First of all, that's awesome. Yeah, Yeah. I think that is a great aspiration. I mean, I cross-dressed when I was a kid. It's like I had a pixie cut and could easily pass as a guy and I thought it was really interesting mm-hmm. to see what the social interactions were like. You yeah. dabble a little bit Being like that. Stuff, yeah. yeah, it's like I didn't really care about the social norms and just kind of went out there. But like it was more me just being like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I could see the interest and fascination with having an interest in cross or uh, doing drag yeah. rather because maybe for some people it's a moment to escape. And yeah. It's like this thing of like getting to be another person for a little bit and getting to experience like that side of Absolutely life. Absolutely, it is. Oh, yeah. That's what acting is in general. Yeah. That's why I love yeah. it so much is you go, okay, me, get the fuck out of here. I'm yeah. gonna be this person for a little bit of time. Yeah. You kind of let everything else go and you forget your issues. I mean, it's like just like any other hobby that you do to take your mind off of the current day to day. So yeah, I think it's very admirable to want to do that and express yeah. yourself. Yeah. Openly. And, and so, I- so Graham asks, how do you guys muster up the courage and motivation to yeah. do something that's scary to you? It's really come with age and experience. It's like... um, So get old. (laughs) Yeah, basically, um, I think the best example for where I had to find a way to get out of my comfort zone and I didn't succeed at it, but it definitely informed the way I approached things later on was um, actually the first show Lindsay and I were in together in college. Um, We had one. (laughs) It was called Fantasies of a Lower Level. It was written by someone that we knew. um, I like that name. Um, it was loosely based on the experiences that this playwright had with his own family and mm-hmm. dealing with autism and that. But um, there was an actor who dropped out who was supposed to be a stripper. And I was 17 when I entered college. I was not, I had had sex once. I had like not really awoken that part of myself at yeah, that point. Totally. And so like I had to completely get out of my comfort zone and I failed completely. But it's like, I still went out there and I tried. I thought you looked beautiful. Like, thank you. Your parents did note <laughs> that there was one girl that looked like she was completely comfortable, whereas the other one felt like she didn't want to be there at all. Yes. But, but of course, was like, that you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My parents were a little bit more, uh, uh, yeah. even more so re- uh, conservative and religious yeah. at the time. They were like, one girl? I appreciated how like controlled she was. The yeah. other girl, she was just too much. <laughs> yeah. Too much stripping over there. <laughs> too much stripping. Uh, but it's like, even when I really wanted to explore acting and understanding what that whole life was like and so I just kind of manned up and just did it and yeah. s- saw what happened and was able to better inform myself later on because of it and it's just kind of like it sucks but it's kind of just like you got to do it like if you yeah. feel passionate about something you got to do it for me I think one of the biggest times I've noticed myself being like, I need to step out of my comfort zone and like have courage to do something that I'm scared to do or uncomfortable with, was actually in college where I was really nervous about doing presentations in general. And I, going to business school, had to Public do, speaking? Mm-hmm. That kind of a Public thing? Public speaking and just like being like, this is what I worked on and let me talk about it and seem very informed on yeah. it. Like I was not good at that at well, all. Well, it's also like you don't know what the other people are going to be presenting. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that's a whole nother level it's a whole of thing. Anxiety. And I had to do it a lot for because I went to business school. So every single class had presentations. And I remember thinking I was so nervous for my own presentation, but when I was watching other people's presentations, I didn't care. Yeah. Like, I was just like, I'm not really paying attention. Like, this person's doing a fine job. I'm sure they're really nervous, but I can't sense Mm -hmm. it. And then I started thinking, this is probably what everyone thinks when I do this, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where we're in such a state of thinking so much about what everyone thinks of us, Mm -hmm. no one actually fucking cares. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I've just taken that life lesson and push it mm -hmm. into everything that I do now where it's no one really cares about what you're doing more than you. No yeah. one knows what they're doing. No one yeah. knows what they're Everyone doing. Everyone is scared out of their mind yes. constantly. Yeah. And that's just a common feeling from, you know, the person making your coffee all the way to people running <clears throat> the country. Yeah. They're all that's true. Yeah. What? This, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're they're, they're figuring this you. shit out and they're scared out of their mind. It's a, yeah. it's the same mentality. In fact, I just I um it's so funny. I just recorded a vlog about this on my own stupid little personal channel, but it was about when I got divorced and I was getting back into the dating field. And that mm -hmm. was scary as fuck because mm -hmm. I was hadn't dated in 11 years and even before that wasn't prevalent in dating. You still mm -hmm. beat me by like five years on your virginity. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yeah, but I was like, it was like, I really want to date. Um, scares the hell out of me. So it was a little bit of that, like, um, I'm sure everyone else is like, you know, freaked out about this whole, like, whenever you just meet someone new. Mm -hmm. So it's it's understanding that kind of like, I get that, I guess that's like an empathetic nature of yeah. everybody else feeling the same thing. As well as a little bit of just like a fuck it mentality. Yeah. Like, uh, not to get dark, but like, we're all gonna die. So like, why not just say hey, that thing yeah. that I okay. wanna say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, like, I say that before I think I mentioned on always episode episodes, but literally every morning I wake up and I go, I could die today. And people are like, wow, you're so morbid. I'm like, no, no, no. Then no, I go, yeah. Before, no. Just, yeah. do it. I get to address my problems and go, does it really matter? Okay. Yeah. I'm like, cool. It's perspective is what it is. Exactly. It's not a morbid mentality. It's a perspective on, on, you know, the time and mm -hmm. the time we have. And so like, if you want to do something crazy, like you want that crazy to other people, like you want to dress and drag, Fuck okay, it, do, do it. it. Do you know it. what? Like, what's and also it's like the mentality of like, what's the worst that could happen if you there, if, if the, you went through with it? The chances are higher that later in life you're going to regret not doing that sooner. Exactly. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it also depends very much so on where you are and what the culture is around you mm -hmm. because there can be major risks to certain things even in this climate that we have now. Right. It's like um, always make sure you're safe. First and foremost, but it's like, I feel like the internet is a big enough place where even if you're in a rural community where you think you don't have people who will support you in these decisions, you can find that support base where you need it. And maybe it's an hour away, but even if you go- Or just online somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like if you need to have that support system to get the confidence, that's perfectly fine too. It's like everyone's journey is so different every single time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's probably one of the great things about the internet is how much it shrunk the world. It definitely has made it feel like you're less alone in whatever mm -hmm. you're feeling or if you think something about yourself is weird or uncommon. Yeah. No, probably not. not. At all. Yeah, <laughs> I've, definitely I've not. been to the dark sides of the internet. What you were doing is yeah. probably totally normal. I went to high school with Martini Chan, so I can't <laughs> That's true, shit. you did. Um, <laughs> I forgot but, about that. Yeah. Can, really quick, can we make a onesie for your baby that says, I have been to the dark yes. sides of the internet? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you were made. <laughs> I'm from the dark sides of the internet. <laughs> oh, you like stargated out of there. <laughs> I love it. Well, also, if even if you can't find people online, just thinking about yeah. like forming a family around yeah. performance, which is totally true. I mean, Rooster Teeth is a perfect example mm -hmm. of that. But even just doing theater, mm -hmm. well, that's where I found a lot of people in Dallas which is like going back to what I was saying, it's very, very strict on a yeah. lot of issues or like, you know, if you don't live your life a certain way, you're yeah. frowned upon, whatever. I was always a black sheep of the family. So then I found my theater friends and I was like, oh my God, like you guys are kind of like me. You're very yeah. extroverted, you're like, all weird. crazy. Exactly, like yeah. you're freaks too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Great, let's be freaks together. And it was- <laughs> On really, stage, in front of people. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and it was pretty funny how that worked too, where like people would watch and be like, oh, you guys are like being way too lewd or way too crass mm -hmm. or like, you know, some people, uh, religiously based think that actors are liars and mm. you shouldn't be an actor because you're, you know, you're sinning basically. And it was so awesome to escape from that Such and find, thing. yeah, I know, I'm terrible. Such you're a, a horrible person. I'm the worst. <laughs> I mean, I also feel like All that sinning you do with Ruby. Terrible. I know we have to like, we aren't totally there yet, but I also feel like there's a major case to be made for the fact that, and I don't remember exactly what the question was or anything, or if anything about his sexuality was like mentioned, but yeah, he's like- a, He said he's a 22 year old gay man who recently found himself like, fascinated by doing drag. I feel like sexuality doesn't play into drag as much anymore. Not at all. Right. No. It's like, I feel like that, if that's an inhibition, like I don't understand the gay perspective from that obviously because I'm not gay and I don't want to speak for people I don't that you're not, yeah. Mm. Um, I, I feel like the stigmatization of dressing in drag or having any sort of 
inclination to that lifestyle doesn't have the same connotations it did maybe when we were growing up. Right. And when we, like, and I know just because, like, gamer is legal now and all that, that doesn't mean we've come over every hurdle. But it's, like, I feel like there's a lot more acceptance, especially if you stick to, like, an internet-based, like, support group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find people that that have the same kind of mindset that you do. I agree about sexuality not limiting you for drag, especially like I was just talking to Michael. I'm straight. I fucking dressed as a man all the time. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to Michael about it. I was like, dude, I kind of want to get into like being a drag king. I've never done that before and I thought it'd be cool. I'm like, "Mm," you know, cis white woman who finds women sexually attractive. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hey, I'll make so. out with ladies, pretend to be a guy. Done. I've done it on stage. Yeah. Going back to acting. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a woman who's going to have sex with this woman. My first kiss was with yeah. a lady. I'm not gay. There's on YouTube, if you go to some of my acting classes, there's a literal sex scene I did. I'm like, that's just on the internet now. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> to Google. <laughs> I mean, we're fully clothed, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you need to work up mm-hmm. the courage and motivation to drive in a car when you drive for the I right can't. time. Yeah, I better segue. <laughs> Hey, when you dress in drag, you got to get to your... Drag shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you get there, Barbara? By using Lyft. There you go. Yes. You can use confidence by talking to your Lyft driver. Getting you need no confidence to talk to Lyft drag. driver. And did you know, when you drive for the right ride-sharing app, every trip can feel like a walk in the park. With Lyft, you could pick your own hours and work when you want. Lyft uh, can make driving the best job in the world. Only Lyft offers in-app tipping. When you drive for Lyft, you keep 100% of the tips. Drivers have been paid over $150 million in tips since the feature was introduced. Well, Express Pay lets drivers get paid almost instantly instead of waiting for weeks. Lyft even has the or has even taken the guesswork out of pickups. The new AMP device uses color coding to help passengers find their drivers. You can earn hundreds of dollars a week plus tips. Want to make more money? Drive more. It's never been easier to give yourself a raise. It's a simple formula. Happy drivers mean happy passengers. Maybe that's why 9 out of 10 Lyft rides get a perfect 5-star rating. So join the ride-sharing company that believes in treating its people better. Go to lyft.com slash alwaysopen today, and you can get a $500 new driver bonus. That's lyft.com slash alwaysopen, lyft.com slash alwaysopen. Limited time only. Terms apply. Just broom, saying. broom. <laughs> Miss you. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to our have Goodness. you ever question. And no soggy bottoms. And this one is submitted by <laughs> Candace G. Hi, Candace. Candace wants to know, have you ever lost something extremely important? My mind. Yeah. Well, have that we wasn't all. Very that joke's out of the way. Let's get to the real stuff. <laughs> so I didn't lose something myself, but I feel responsible for the thing that was lost. What'd you do? This was two Christmases ago. I got Aaron a nice wallet for Christmas as one of his gifts. Because he just keeps his cards like in his pocket. He keeps everything oh, just in his pocket. Oh, that's not smart. With a clip? Which he, no, just in you're his just pocket. You're just going to lose nope. all your shit. You're married to yep. I mean, you're not married. You're dating. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not you get married, married now. You're not married that <laughs> No, but uh, he, he's, he's done it as far as I know his entire life. And it's been fun. He has weird fine. habits. He your does boyfriend have weird has habits. weird habits. I think his, his pants are so tight that they just he stay He text messages now, right? No, I wear tight pants and I have a wallet. He has WhatsApp. Okay. That's what we use. Does which is know? basically text message. You never texted him before? I didn't know this. <laughs> he doesn't text message. Yet. What? He doesn't. He didn't. It was really annoying when I was trying to schedule him sometimes. Yeah. Like Aaron, <laughs> just answer. <laughs> um, but I so I got him this wallet, thinking, oh, this will be a nice gift. You could put all your stuff in one place and just put it in your pocket. And so he really liked it, and he put everything in it. And a couple weeks later, we went to the mall, and. He was buying a few things, and it was exciting for me because I get to go shopping with him, which we never get to do. And we decided to sit down on one of the little benches inside the mall just to, like, check our email for a second and hang out. Mm-hmm. And then we get up and go somewhere else to the next door, and he tries some, 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 some stuff and goes to the counter to buy it, and he reaches back into his pocket, and he goes, I don't, I don't have my wallet. And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, I don't know. It's not in my pocket. I was like, well, I don't have it. Should we go back to the other store to see if it's there? Wasn't at the last store we went to. Wasn't at the store before that. Wasn't at the lost and found. Christ. Nowhere to be found. So we assume when we were sitting on the bench, maybe it fell out of his pocket and someone grabbed it. Or it fell somewhere because he's not used to having that much stuff in his pocket at one time. That's his fault. 
I still feel really bad. I yeah. feel like it's partially my fault. That's on him. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's definitely on him, but I still feel like if he didn't have the wallet, that wouldn't have happened. But it had like his license and his credit card and all these cards he had to replace God. because he lost it. I feel really It was bad. really nice. The only time I lost my license was when I was a UT student and they accepted UT ID as a government issued ID oh, so really? I could automatically get my license back. And it was just like, oh, nice. You lost my ID. <laughs> <laughs> you guys? Yeah. Uh, I would say the thing that I lost that has bugged me for years now was uh, actually it's, it's a collection of things. Growing up, I had both a very large collection of action figures mm. and a very, very large and complete collection of superhero trading cards that were in binders. I had binders. So shit, that would be worth something. Yes. It's the worth is something there, but it's also just like these are literal like embodiments of my childhood and my memories. And I also still love these things. And you probably went to a lot of effort and spent a lot of money. Oh yeah, I would say all of my allowance from, you know, a certain age, like for a a decade probably, just Mm -hmm. went to buying action figure toys and buying these packs of cards. And I had them like, I don't, I don't know where they went. And at some point they were gone. I don't know if my mom gave them away or if they just were lost in a move or something. Even now as an adult, and it wouldn't cost very much at this point, but I've always wanted to like just go back on eBay and rebuy all the cards I had just so I could have them. Mm. Um, and they're very, because they have no value. And actually the, the trading cards have no value. Yeah, I wasn't really um, If I had the action figures in, yeah, in boxes, they might have. But um, Something always gets lost during moves. Mm-hmm. I, it, I think it was either a move or my mom might have just conveniently got rid of them mm. and so uh yeah Here. i bought it i still am sad have you ever day. asked her about it i, I no because i think she might have she got rid of a lot of our stuff she was a, she was a very much of a purging kind of person mm. when it came to belongings yeah um which was great because our house I was never cluttered be that sort of yeah <laughs> um not like the exact person. opposite of a hoarder where it's like if you didn't use something for like a certain amount of months then we should get rid of it maybe um same with clothes and that kind of thing so i think it might have just I don't, I don't think she maliciously probably got rid of it, but she probably, it was probably left at their house when I was away at something like mm-hmm. college or something like that. And then it's like, well, this is, get, just get rid of this stuff. So but I'm very sad because I had binders of these things. That sucks. Yeah, that's just a lot of effort. Yeah. <laughs> so what about you guys? Have you ever um, lost anything important to you? Yeah, I, uh, I was given a lamb. My family is very Catholic. So um, I was given this lamb stuffed animal at my baptism that saying Mary had a little lamb. And, um, like, if you wound it up and stuff. Cute. And so I slept with that every single night. Um, I used to fly back and forth between my parents a lot after they got divorced. And on one of the visits, I was in a hotel room on a layover with, like, my aunt or something. And um, I forgot the lamb at the hotel room and didn't realize until we had landed at the next location. By the time we called the hotel, they had already cleaned the room and none of the cleaning staff said that it was there and I was 10 at this point yeah. so I had been sleeping with this lamb since I was like less than two years old to when I was 10. Oh my god um and companion. yeah it was it was heartbreaking like my parents like got me a little locket that had an x on it since I had it for 10 years and like all sorts of stuff and like oh. still when I like can't fall asleep I just start singing Mary had a little lamb to myself in my head and that's what gets Goodness. me to sleep. That is so adorable <laughs> and so heartbreaking. <laughs> can in the final post of this show, can yeah. you um, lay over the image that we saw of Maggie? Oh yeah, with your story yeah. on top and just slowly zoom in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that reminds me of a story. I guess I didn't think about this when I read this question, but I also I left a stuffed animal that I loved on an airplane one time mm-hmm. on a connecting flight. Yeah, I had it with me on the plane and I just left it in my seat. Stuffed yeah. animals, man. I left a. Uh, I've eaten pizza one time in a hotel. Oh, <laughs> no. I no. Came no. back, they threw it away. I've <laughs> called the ruckus. So sorry. I told the people. How did you get through me. that? <laughs> did you guys have names for your stuffed animals? Yes. Or? Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. I, I was the least creative kid. Oh, me too. I had a bunny that was named Fluffy. Nice. My lamb was named Lammy. Lammy. Yes, there you go. And so. I had a bear that had a little nightcap on it. I called it Sleepy Bear. There you go. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. Yeah>. Groundbreaking. <laughs> I had a dog it's, named Pup Pup. Oh, whoa, <laughs> Lindsay get yeah, creative here. My, my stuffed dog there. that I got when I wasn't allowed to actually have a dog was named Crystal. Oh, nice. Well, that's <laughs> that's, that's good. good. <laughs> you named it after like a, like a human friend. Yeah. No, so I, I actually, so when I was trying to figure out what to like show like for the whole segment of like, hey, this is embarrassing about me. Um, I, uh, 
found an old journal entry from uh, my live journal mm -hmm. talking about how I wanted to, uh, my new slut alter ego was Katrina and like yes. I put on eyeliner and a headband oh, and changed Katrina. my hair a little bit and I look so good and uh, I should really. What's uh, a slut personality? <laughs> that's that. <laughs> what you just uh, described. Yeah, but what Are you familiar function? with me and how non-sexual I am most oh. of the time? So it was like. Are you allowed to make slut personalities at 32? Because I still don't have one. Um, I don't, I'm not at that age, so I can't. <laughs> no, I'm saying you're not. Oh, absolutely. Am I allowed that's to make a yeah. slut personality? I, I mean, I think you already did when you were on your Tinder parts. <laughs> Damn. You did do Tinder. Yeah. 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 I you're remember, one of the slutty Tinders. I still have a. We was should, I? We yeah. Should, we should talk about your Tinder experiences. Because there was one time where uh, a mutual friend of ours was helping you construct messages to a girl via Tinder, right? Via Tinder? Was it Tinder? I think it was just like. DMing or texting or something. Yeah, you were DMing someone. Yeah, he slid into her DMs. Yeah, Shit. you got it. You got it. You know, if, if you got that contact, you got that connection, you got to use it. I don't appreciate that as someone who has open DMs. Oh, that's <laughs> your problem for open DMs. I want to DM. change. Hey, I like talking out. to. Well, don't. Okay, you open yourself <laughs> up to anybody to talk to on the internet, then you can open yourself up to like. Hey, there are a lot of people who want to have meaningful conversations about their mental health that I'm happy to have cool. those conversations well, that's very nice with of you. Mm. I don't leave anything open for anybody to talk to me. Yeah. I'm what is the name of this fucking show? Maggie, would you say you're always open? Hey. Yeah, see? Thank you. Uh, no. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> to be fair. That's the wrong fucking show. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's appropriate for any show. It can, it can be repurposed. Is that just the theme song the, of Rooster <laughs> Teeth now? Well, it's the only theme song that's easy to recreate very quickly. <laughs> Did your brother write that one as well? No, the, the original on the spot theme song was... It's, it's an audio track, right? Like yeah, that. it's an amalgamation of of, uh, of two songs put together, and then in a recent season, because I, I, I wanted it to be our own, I had my brother like re, uh, oh, okay. remaster it. Because I loved what your brother did for X-Ray and Valve. Oh, it was like, awesome. It was oh, yeah. amazing. He's so wildly uh, talented with music. What yeah. happened? Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, no, my parents, <laughs> my, my brother's the youngest child, and oh, they got it right on the last one. Gotcha. Yeah. See, it's the opposite of my family. <laughs> Oh, they used up all the good stuff? Yeah, on there Matthew. And There's then, two ways that can yeah. be done, yeah. <laughs> they really fucked up in the middle with me, but they figured it out with my brother. So what, did, what was your big loss? Oh, see, I was thinking about that when I got the prompt, too. I'm like, I can think of small things that I've lost over the years because I'm very forgetful and I lose mm -hmm. a lot of things. Um, or, like, as a kid, small little toys or stuff. I guess the biggest things that I've lost that's really upset me is all, like, I don't know, metaphorical stuff or, like, existential things. Mm. Like, uh, I've lost an opportunity to go to uh, grad school for mm -hmm. writing because I was dumb and I skipped the uh, entrance date to send Shit. in your stuff. Yeah. And I remember being on the phone with one of the reps who's like trying to help me out but still kind of being passive aggressive about the fact that I missed the date. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, is there anything I can do? And she was like, mm, apply earlier. Ooh. I was like, oh, oh bitch. Fucking Okay. No, that's what you say. What was her say, name? Shut up, bitch. What was her name? Yeah. Let's like, dox oh, her right now. Sorry. It's just rapid stuff. That hurts so bad. Fuck you. Doxing yeah. is not cool. Do not no, dox do people. That. that is not okay. No, yeah. what? Dox? It's where you like blast people social media yeah, or anything like that. It's wise where you like get their personal information. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Well, <laughs> Maggie, is I, I went to high school with Martini words. Chan. You expect me to know what's going on? Martini Chan, for anyone who she got doxxed real bad. Yeah. I don't know who Martini Chan. Is. Uh, this is a girl uh, who uh, peed into, into a, martini a martini glass bath. and then drank it and posted those pictures online. To Four Chan, yes. of course. Yeah, and made a name for herself. Yeah, she uh, she was engaged at the time. Mm, nice. And uh, because she got doxxed, her then fiance as well as her family found out about what she had done. But yeah. no sympathy because you Ty, internet. you're a bitch. Also, you, you, put it, you put it on the internet. Yeah. You gotta be careful about no, that shit. She wasn't a good person. So I have no sympathy, like yeah. whatsoever. She was just not a nice person. Yeah. So the, the I can agree with you there a yeah. little bit. Although, even then, I'm like, ah, memories. Yeah. Um, so I have a tattoo right here on my hip that I've never shown anyone because it's like too much Lindsay. Hey, that was the same time I got this thing. It was. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maggie and I went to a tattoo parlor. And I got this tattoo. We were up. drunk as shit on Halloween. Yeah, I don't know why they gave us a tattoo. You shouldn't yeah, do we that. Were, yeah. <laughs> we're trash. We're like, let's do it. Everyone yeah. involved should not have been involved. Yeah. We're six shots in, let's go. I puked immediately <laughs> after getting my piercing. Oh, God. That's right. Yeah, yeah. you got sick. It's like, Christ, dude. Calm I was like, I'm just anxious. I'm just Wait, anxious. Where, where's the piercing? Oh, it was uh, right yeah. here. Oh, you oh, guys like see those... the two little yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. It got rejected, so. Um. 
I have very her, her body skin. The SAT yeah. score wasn't high enough. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Maybe if you applied earlier. Uh, <laughs> I should have done the ACT. My bad. <laughs> Whoops. <Well, laughs> sucked. Yeah. But sorry. Um, the main part of my tattoo was a sparrow, and um, unfortunately, that's connected to my first engagement. But you know, memories again. Life. Yeah. yeah life it's experiences. Part of your life. Yeah, yeah, it's part of me. So uh, I asked a friend who was with us at the time to write yeah. freedom above it. Even though had, I was there. Yes. But she had gorgeous <laughs> handwriting, and I said, okay. Can you do this? And I compared the two. I was like, I'm sorry, I gotta yeah. go with this. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now I don't talk to her anymore. <laughs> so Not out of like spider or anything. No, it's just, it's like, just we've, we've lost apart. contact. We've lost connection. Yeah. Yeah. So now I just have someone's handwriting on me that I yeah. never speak to. At least Instead it's of mine. nicer than Maggie's handwriting, <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Get shit out of here. <laughs> you can draw my next tattoo. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, I have Pat. Pat's like in line to design my next one. Because it's like I have my tattoos planned out for like, like 10 years I at this to, point. I need to get mine fixed up. Yeah, that was no, pretty cute. It's, I fine. That. it's pretty it's pretty janky. It's so um, if you see it up close, clear. it's it's pretty I mean, I feel Ramsey like original. that could easily yeah. be transformed into the whole signature if you yeah, wanted that. I was thinking about that. Or at right. least adding more birds to it. Yeah. So it's not just the it's single a single one. Flock. A it's whole flock. Like, the what I'm asking Pat to design for me would be my rooster teeth related one because all of my tattoos I want to represent different like Moments big experiences in, life, yeah. in my life. So it's like my first one's about like me thinking about religion and trying to understand my philosophy with life. And so basically I studied a bunch of religions and decided that uh, Buddhism said the same thing, but did it not for a higher power and mm. just for yourself and for your fellow man, which yeah. is what I agreed with. And so that's what that one represents. And then it's like, my next one's going to be the Vitruvian man. Cause that was my high school mascot. Cause I'm a fucking nerd. <laughs> but, Vitruvian um, man's the, yeah. yeah. The, Wait nice a second. Though. Was the Vitruvian Man the actual mascot of your school? Yes. yes. That, that is did not have sports. Really mad nerd. Really yeah. nerdy. Maggie was Science yeah. Academy of Science. I Texas. want to see <laughs> the actual like the costume that would have yeah. shown up. Oh, there the was no costume yeah. ever because there weren't sports. That's what but I'm saying. I am just imagining some guy coming out like this at like a football if, game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a Go naked dude. <laughs> yeah, he just has like strings connecting the arms. Yeah, <laughs> he just yeah. had one a of those leaf. wheels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, they actually like. I was really pissed off our senior year. They took off his penis. What? And it's made like, with Kendall. Yeah, it's like. Just like Wait, young. Kendall, or they put a leaf on it? No, they took it off. Wait, so it's just smooth. Yeah, Straight up. smooth. It's like that you are disrespecting like a the art of one of the greatest <laughs> scientists that has ever lived and informed everything that we did. Also, um, nudity is beautiful. Yeah, it is art in itself. Yeah, so. I don't think my nudity is beautiful. Hey. But <laughs> 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 I like to imagine too. You're saying like, what if a mascot showed up? Yeah. Instead of your like halftime show, he yeah. comes in intermission of a th like a play. He's like, yeah. ooh, yeah. Like, Who's enjoying yeah. the roof? <laughs> I'm imagining it's one of those like little wheels that they just, stand and just like rolls in. <laughs> Be amazing. <laughs> Hello, student body. <laughs> that reminds me, I need to schedule you for those pictures I never scheduled you for. Oh yeah. Yeah. Photo? You didn't shoot? Yeah. You shoot. Are you gonna I do it do in your a underwear? underwear thing? Ooh. It's Ooh. like I'm not gonna. I'm cutting my hair off into a pixie cut <gasps> as soon as I can because I fucking hate this hair. I but, love your hair. Eh, you can have it. Oh. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> can I use it for extensions? Yeah. Yes. My hair's um, low maintenance. It's all virgin too at this point. Like all my dyed stuff is out. Oh, so nice. yeah. It's all natural, but baby. I want to get John to take a picture because it's like every girl's dream, right? Is to have like the mermaid, mermaid picture mm -hmm. where your hair covers your tits. And yeah. I was just going like, to say, are you going dress? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Classy. Classy. Well, I was going to say, if um, you take it in your underwear, you could wear me undies. Oh, okay. yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Same <laughs> way. Make mermaid tails. Master. <laughs> do they make female underwear? They do. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. You perfected your wardrobe. But what about the stuff not everyone gets to see or some people get to see? Some people don't do. look at me like that when you talk about underwear. <laughs> what is me undies? Michael's not here. <laughs> oh, just seriously soft, feel good undies delivered right to your door. I like the way this ad is written. Me undies are designed in uh, Los Angeles and made from sub sub su sustainably sourced. I swear I could read. I promise. Micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Me undies softer than soft Lux undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shapes, and adventurous patterns, so you could tailor undies to your own personal style. And guess what? What? You could save time and money each month with a monthly subscription. And if you're not ready for a subscription, that's okay. You could still save. That's because Me Undies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use our special URL, MeUndies.com/open, and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead. Revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. Once again, that's meundies.com slash open, meundies.com 
slash open. I, love I want me on these to be open. To be open. <laughs> no, they have actually like a lot of different female cuts. They yeah. have like uh, the boy shorts, they have thongs, okay. they have cool. like the cheeky briefs. You have a couple of the boy shorts there. there. It's a cheeky brief. Is it like a brief but with a little more boy short to it? Uh, it's like or... a brief but like more of your butt cheek show. Yeah. Oh, it's like a okay. Cut. So it's like, like a nicer thong. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> More but, coverage in a thong, less than a boy short. Yeah. It's like yeah. halfway through your ass cheek, it goes mm. somewhere in between. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like get super self conscious about the way I look in thongs because it's like the cellulite starting. So I'm just like shut your mouth. Ugh. Shut it. <laughs> shut it. Here's the thing. Like mm, I don't know how. Like people don't see me in underwear a lot. Yeah. Not even my boyfriend. Because it's either like I'll be not oh, wearing yeah. them at all, or like in the middle of getting That's dressed true. or changing. Yeah, I'm a bit of the same. I'm like the, the most that Michael sees me in my underwear is when I'm like getting dressed in the morning, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, if I go home, the second I'm home, I'm like, okay, fuck you, clothes. <laughs> Bye. Done. Although the me undies, <laughs> I do keep on sometimes because they are actually really soft, yeah. and they feel like just. Do they have any lots. like crotchless? <laughs> I'm sure. They should. Meandies, <laughs> if you're watching, hey. make us a special always open version of your underwear. Meow. It is always open. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> I like how you winked at John. I know. <laughs> he was the one making eye contact with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm regretting making God. eye contact with any of you. Oh, are you? I am. Well, John, are you ready for our next yeah. segment? Do I'm ready. What is it? Oh, or? no. No, I. Sex expertise. <laughs> I have lots of that. This, this question comes from James. And James writes Hey, everyone. There's a girl at the front desk of my gym that I'm crazy about. I'm a good looking muscular guy and I've never had problems getting girls except this one because I don't know how to ask her out. I always talk to her and flirt, but she's always surrounded by thirsty gym guys chasing her and I don't want to look like one of them. We are the same age and she's a sweetheart and I really want to get to know her. I'm always very forward when it comes to girls I like slash want, but this one really matters to me. How do I ask her out? I, I'm, okay, oh, this is John's opinion. Mm -hmm. John's opinion is bad news. You don't get to ask her out. Ooh. Well, I feel like you get to be friends. Well, well yeah. why? Actually, why? see if you genuinely yeah, because, like her. All right, so he's, he's got it figured out. This poor girl is in a situation mm -hmm. where if she is a, uh, a, a girl, if she's attractive and she is in that kind of a scenario, then yes, she's going to be in a constant state of guys doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and there is no way that he gets to set himself apart. No. There is nothing, there's no magic combination of words or, uh, uh, let me just get this backwards, meet cute? Meet cute, yeah. Yeah, I say cute meet sometimes. It's a meet cute. Um, or I some sort of, in film. Yeah, I'm not it's, it's like that moment that the two characters Oh, okay, connected. okay, okay. Um, so there's no meet cute that you can figure out that's going to make this scenario more, that's different from the other ones, unless she magically makes the move first. But there's right. nothing in his power that I think he can do other than just being nice and being a good guy and not making like advances yeah. that leaves him open to her thinking that there's nothing he can do, sorry. Well, I mean, is he, my biggest thing would be like, are you asking what her interests are? Are you trying to figure out like, get to know what her? other activities besides being at this gym, can you get to know her better and say, oh, hey, you're into capoeira, I'm into capoeira, let's go to this thing together. Right. <laughs> like, Capoeira I think, has been on my mind. But I mean, that's, I that's technically asking someone else. Awesome. Well, um, no, I don't think it is. I think it's like, hey, what are you interested in? I want to get to know you better as a friend. I want to, like, develop and see, like, if we are friends because I've enjoyed our interaction so far. I, I, I feel like that's not too forward. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm notoriously bad for not understanding when guys that I think I'm friends with are asking me out. Mm. But it's like... I think it's but perfectly then they're, fine. On the other side of the, the line, there are girls who think every guy that talks right. to them is asking them out. Right. Mm -hmm. Which maybe she might be in that case. That's true. Yeah. At the end of the day, too, I was thinking about it. And, like, unfortunately, no matter what you do, if that is her reaction or, like, hey, I'm not interested, you got you to respect that. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, at some point, you got to be like, okay, all right, that's fine. I'm of the opinion, but I'm, like, from a family that's super blunt and straightforward. Mm -hmm. Like, just say, hey, you know, I would love to take you somewhere or something. Or, or are you seeing anyone? Initiate that question and then, yeah. you know, take it from there. <laughs> yeah, and be like totally prepared for a no yeah. and be totally prepared yeah. for a respectful re respectful response to that no mm -hmm. that isn't anything remotely like, but what it, like, nope. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. if this guy's genuinely interested in even just having a friendship with this person, which I would hope if you're interested in dating someone, you're interested in even just having a friendship with that person. Yeah. And it's like, if that's the case, worst case scenario, she says, no, I'm not going on a date with you. You have a new friend now. It it's still like, might be a little maybe. awkward, though. Maybe. Yeah, awkward, <laughs> yeah. but it, like awkward for like a month. 
Get over it. Well, it depends mm-hmm. on the person, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. As long I, as there's, yeah. I agree. There's, as long as there's no underlying, like, we'll be friends for a little bit. I'm and then, drunk. I'm sorry. Nice. <laughs> Thank yes. you. That's fine. Like I said, Thanks, I'll be taking care of you. I'm, just, <laughs> yeah. I'm driving. Um, yeah, as long as there's no underlying, like, we'll be friends for a while, but then maybe I can make my move again, or maybe I can try a little bit more. It's like, no, 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 you got to yeah, no, understand like, that this it, is a friend thing. If, if, if you're okay with being friends with the person and then she eventually says, oh, I think you're wonderful. Mm-hmm. and I've actually developed feelings. Yeah, yeah, it's like she doesn't even know that you had those feelings in the first place. And it's like I feel like that's the best scenario because mm-hmm. it's like I've had the friends where it's like I think we can just be friends, get over the whole fact that you had a crush on me and just continue on with that friendship. And then it blows up in my fucking face. And yeah. you know, it's like... You have to just actually be willing to be friends with the person if you're going to... Yeah. Because it seems like a situation where you have to get to know the person better. Mm. I could I could speak from experience in the sense where even if I've been in a relationship, if a guy who I've either seen recurringly or just meet one time, it always feels good to be asked out as mm-hmm. a girl. I don't think there's any girl that could say like, oh... It's not a confidence booster when a guy comes up to me and oh, tells yeah. me I'm pretty. It's and the only on reason the I have OK Cupid, just so I, I can be like, ah, that feels nice. Depends on <laughs> depends. the asking yeah. out. But, it, like, it, I mean, don't be 40 you. asking out a 26-year-old. <laughs> like, that's creepy. But, I, I, like, if, from what he says, he thinks of himself as an yeah. attractive guy. I'm not trying to doubt that, and she's probably a very beautiful girl. She's probably used to a lot of guys, you know, maybe hitting on her, but not necessarily asking her out because she is working at mm-hmm. that gym. If you just go up to her and be like, I, you know... It's been cool getting to chat with you every now and then. I think you're really beautiful. I like your your yeah. eyes are beautiful. And I was wondering if you were seeing anyone because I'd love to take you out for a drink. Yeah. Even if she's like, oh, like, I'm sorry, but I'm seeing someone. Or, oh, like, yeah. I'm not interested, but thank you. Like, you tried. And yeah. that probably made her feel yeah. good about herself. And I'm, I'm of the opinion, again, like, not even just my blunt family, but I think that we've come to a point now from the majority of people that I've spoken to, especially women, who've had this happen where like a guy just comes up and is like, hey, I'm just gonna put it all on the table, be completely honest about it. They appreciate that so much more yeah. than the lingering awkward like, hey, let's let's, yeah. let's try and have friendship here or talk about something. It's like, okay, I kind of get the feeling that like you're gonna lead up to this. Okay, there it is. And now we've yeah. asked out about the date. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll agree with that. I think I think there's a little bit too much of a uh, idea in our heads and maybe it comes from, you know, growing up watching movies and stuff like that where like we think of the game or the con that's gonna yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. And that- 90s movies. Well, I don't even think of it as a con. And it's like, I just, I know I went through a big phase in my life where I refused to date anyone if I was not friends with them. Like, that was just a thing with me. Go I needed on a date? to know. You wouldn't even yeah, go on a no. date? I needed to know that I had enough in common with this person. I guess it goes back to my anxiety and stuff, mm. where I know this date could have potential and I know that I'm not going to be awkward or like uncomfortable with any part of the conversation because I know your core values at that point. Mm. Interesting. No. See, like, I never made... Or made like, <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. No, 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 actually, no, I'm not saying... Yeah, no, wrong, Maggie. Yeah, Maggie, strokes. Maggie, Maggie <laughs> wrong. Uh, no, it was more so... That was that was uh, 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 stupid John going internal and going like, no, that's not what you do. You just, like, you're just trying to get on the date and yeah. then you get another person on that date, that kind of thing. But that was, that was my approach. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. mandate that, but I think that's exactly what happened with Michael mm-hmm. and I. Is like, we were good friends and yeah. we hung out a lot and then we're like, oh, hey, like, I'm actually starting to develop feelings. So yeah. I do feel both sides of the argument. And even going back to like getting past that awkward phase of knowing this person was attracted to you mm-hmm. if you do just want friendship. Yeah. I mean, we have a good friend of ours is named Glenn. Yeah. And I had a massive crush on him in high school. Like it was bad. Like high school obsessed. In- like nineties movie college. obsession. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we went to the same college and I was like, oh my God, like maybe we could be together one day. Yeah. Now like we're going to his yeah. wedding this weekend. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, think, I think of him And as, it's not you. <laughs> no, yeah. No. no. Like I could not be more unattracted to him now because we become such good friends. Glenn yeah. is a kid all yeah. to me. He like, is. Gotcha. Yeah. He's he's flat down there. There's nothing. Yeah. They're not but gonna But it's just kids. like there's tons of guys where it's been like, Oh, I love this friendship with you and if I had just not try to even have that friendship with you, I wouldn't even have considered yeah. Like you I guess yeah, it can also depend on your social circle. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, 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 when, again, when I got into back in the dating scene, I understood that my social circle is rooster teeth. That's all. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. fucking terrible. And so, uh, <laughs> yep. and, you know, as you get older, I think there's less uh, opportunities for you to be uh, running into a bunch of yeah. random new people when you're young. School, you have all to that have a stuff. specific hobby to meet people. And yeah. Like- um, so, yeah, I, I kind of was like, if I got a date, I got to just go out there mm-hmm. and just find people and then I'll, I'll, I'll find yeah. out. They're cool. they have nothing yeah. Mm. I, I also feel like 
you should try your best to be as straight up with someone as possible, which is why the f like trying to be friends first might be difficult. Mm -hmm. For example, <coughs> there there was a guy I met at a convention recently. He was in the green room where we were at, and he kept like coming over to talk to me, and and he like gave me his number and stuff. And me as someone who's in a relationship, I didn't want to be like, by the way, I have mm -hmm. a boyfriend because. I didn't know that was his yeah. intention. I didn't know if he was just trying to be friends with me or whatever. But a, a lot of people have that thing where, oh, if I bring up my boyfriend, does that mean like this guy won't even try to be friends with me? Or there's, yeah. there's going to be no, um, like it's going to seem like, oh, don't talk to me because I have a boyfriend. So it's always that question of when do you bring it up? So it might be good just to get in there and ask. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. seeing anyone? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an obvious I thing. I mean, I just don't understand the whole... I guess this is my shortcoming. I don't understand the mentality of wanting to date someone, but not wanting to be friends with that person. And I know that's not how other people think. I just... I don't understand that at all. Because it's like, every person I date, I want to be a really good friend, if not a best friend. Oh, I'm sure every everyone like, wants to date yeah. someone and yeah. become best friends. With them. I would like, think the ideal would be, like, you spend the rest of your life with your best friend. And that's yeah. what some of the best relationships I've heard of is people saying, like, I genuinely consider my spouse... To be like best the best friend, friend that yeah. I have, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. It should be. I mean, that's that's the way it ideally should be, but not everyone has that yeah. same experience. I'm thinking also going back to like the boyfriend thing, like how you were afraid that it would deny a friendship. At the same time, too, I think it's interesting how sometimes that's like the validation for some people to step away from like the flirting. I'm like, why is that a validation? Like, yeah, this person could be completely single mm -hmm. and just be like, sorry, I'm not interested. And then you got to respect that. Yeah. Like, okay. Also true. Backing off. My opinion, James, is to go for it. <laughs> I know some, I agree. some other people might disagree, but... Yeah, all I say is just yeah. get to know her, make her feel more special before you do it. Much like we felt about the drag question, fuck it, just go for yeah. it. Yeah. Tom right. Do it. Yolo. I get weirded yeah. out when people think that I'm good enough to date without actually knowing me. Like, that's just a self-insecurity mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. I you know? just want to be treated like a piece of meat. That's all I want. <laughs> It's okay. all good. Everything I do in and life. And maybe yeah. James wants that too, or it's maybe salt this girl. John up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. everything Marinated. is about just cosmetically trying to get there to I be objectified it. by. That's everyone. all that's, I've understood his, about your entire your slut personality. You. It's here. <gasps> we made it. <laughs> Some Yay! Is, is shown. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> I don't know. What's my slut name? John Snow. Uh, <laughs> always open. Your slut Nailed name it. is. Uh, it's gotta be like some variant of John. Barnicula. Right? Tex, what's my slut name? Hmm. I feel like you can figure me out. I'm trying to figure this out. The, yeah. the slot machine. Texas some reason, people are good. What'd you say? <laughs> for some reason, I'm going for Lance for some reason. Oh, Lance, Lance is, like, is yeah. a good, Lance all, uh, is a good like slut name. Lance and his big Lance. Lance, 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 Lance Armley. Armley. All the Lance is watching. <laughs> Lance a lot? I don't there, oh, Yeah. I could, mm -hmm. that, Lance fucks a lot. There you go. Done. And on that note. Done. Good luck, James. Let us know how it goes. Yeah. If you have a question for us on the show, uh, for any of our different segments that we do, you could email alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. Also, if you want to submit a shot for us to do, you could also email us that there. Thank you, John, <laughs> Lindsay, Maggie, for joining me today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. It was a pleasure. And if, uh, so if you want to sign up for First Membership, you could see our special post show where we're going to be talking about the first book we fell in love with. Ooh. Yeah, so and I'll say the Ooh. first person I... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. A cheers to cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers. Mazel tov. Oh, yeah, happy Passover. <laughs> <laughs>